meat needs mixed nuts, filbert, and cashews, and pecans. Turn the bag around to read something about nuts. I see in the bottom a stamp that says, These nuts are good for a thousand years. <laughs> then all day I kind of wonder, how can this be? I got them at the health food store, so there should be no, no preservatives. And how did they even test that? Did some nuts from the Middle Ages just go bad? I imagine calling them up and telling them that their stamp is wrong. They are grateful. I get a lifetime supply of complimentary nuts. <laughs> but wait, how do lifetime supply deals work? Would my next of kin have to write a letter and tell them if I die? What an odd letter to have to write. I consider writing it. And then, in one of those moments when you realize that your brain is processing the world, even when you are not conscious of it, I realize it says May 30th. 2014. The end. <laughs> Footnote. This isn't really about the end. And this is about beginnings. Let me preface this by saying I am a scientist, an engineer. I left MIT in the 24th grade with multiple degrees in robotics. And I have an undergraduate degree in general physics. I like precision and graph paper, and I own an order of magnitude more hand tools than I do shoes and earrings combined, both of which come in pairs. <laughs> so what I'm about to describe feels a bit to me like machining a cloud. So for the sake of something, I will call this cloud the pecan principle. The pecan principle states, a moment of awe is worth a lifetime of nuts. <laughs> what I'm referring to here is the endless opportunity afforded by being open to experiencing awe. I'm not just talking about what you feel when you see a magic trick or the Grand Canyon or color enhanced images from the Hubble telescope but about all that you can experience and even create around mundane and everyday objects. Now, there is research with empirical support suggesting that there's some evolutionary justification for the sensation of awe. And there are theories about why some people might be more prone to experiencing awe than others. So I ask you, was my little nut thing a perceptual mistake? Or was it a result of my openness to possibility and awesomeness? <laughs> Imagine if your first impression was awe. If you questioned the world instead of assumed it. If you lowered your bar for cognitive closure. I have learned that the world will not kick me out if I don't understand what I perceive. On the contrary. On the contrary. It will absorb me. It will connect me if I can actually consider my perceptions to be misunderstandings from the beginning. So, I started a company. Oh, well, this is, it's a bit hard to do, actually. It takes a bit of work. It means that I actually have to relax some constraints of this huge belief system that culture and even classical physics has designed me into. Don't panic. I'm still rational, and I still subscribe to all the constructs that make me at least a demonstrably functioning adult. But it is under this guise that I decided to start my own company, and according to these principles. It's called Rock Paper Robot, and we make kinetic furniture, moving stuff like uh, levitating tables, transforming tables, robotic chandeliers, responsive shelves, clocks that tell time with sand. Imagine what you might find on Eames and Jetson's wedding registry. 
Everything that I design is based in a physics principle or a dynamic process, with the goal being not only to be functional, but to be inspiring, to cause that moment of awe. My target market, your limbic system. This is our signature piece. It's a levitating table. We call it float. wood can't really be magnetized, so we actually embed magnets that repel into every adjacent pair of faces. Then we can vary, we can vary the magnetic strength and change how the table reacts to things that are put on it or other external forces and how rigid it feels. Here's some more pictures. If you look closely, you can see that all the repelling cubes are actually held in equilibrium by a system of flexible steel cables. Basically, this whole thing is like a big wooden jello cube that I wouldn't suggest putting your laptop down on. <laughs> when a friend first saw one of my initial prototypes of this, he came up to me and said, you should use magnets. I can only assume that he thought I was using magic. And this is exactly the kind of illogical amazement that I try to create. This is another table. It's basically a big concrete diamond balancing on its point. But it's not concrete, and it's not balancing. It's 47 pieces of corian, all glued up together, and then suspended from an internal structure. We call it brag. This is a gleam chandelier. It's a robotic chandelier that opens and closes in response to ambient sound. It knows if you're having a rave or if it's an intimate dinner party, and it lights accordingly. So, true. I make furniture, but really, I'm trying to fabricate awe. And if I can, or if a, if, a, if a little stamp on the back of a nut bag can, even for a single moment, simultaneously seduce me into a future of multitude and grandeur, if it can connect me to the Middle Ages, if it can make me look at my own mortality, and even cause me to wonder about the latest technology of nut preservation, <laughs> then I can make a table float. So, this is a footnote to that whole nut story. Consider this. After this talk, I'd have to say, there's probably a pretty good chance that I will have a lifetime nut donor. <laughs> and I'm prepared, because I've already written them the letter telling them that I died. <laughs> Thank you.